Age fans, people into webs, it's me back for another Star Trek, the official Starships collection review. This time we're doing number 84, I'll get it into frame there. Um, the uh, United Earth Starfleet NX Alpha. Of course, you know, get the nice glossy magazine and the ship itself. More on that in a little while. Excuse me. Now, let's get into this uh, little lovely then. Um, specification NX Alpha. Type test ship, affiliation, United F Starfleet. Launched 2343, destroy 2343. Length 20 meters, top speed warp 9, warp 2.2, pilot AG Robinson. And we get a nice bottom section view of it there, which is really cool. Um, the NX Alpha was the first series prototype ships that were built as a new test ship to new test a new type of warp engine. Similar to the appearance of Dr. Cochrane's uh, Phoenix with tubular shape, main, tubular shape main body, the differences uh, were found at the rear, the shape of the wing structure and the nacelles. At Enterprise and XO1's launch ceremony, according, uh, recording of a speech given by Zephyr Cochrane in 2119 at the Warp 5, at the Warp 5 complex, uh, was played to the uh, attending dignitaries. Cochrane was filmed with Dr. Henry Archer and the other scientists involved in developing the warp engine that would allow humans to travel further than they had before. And then we get some uh, images from the episode itself. Uh, with the in the orbit of air fair, the cockpit, um, and the cockpit, the inside of the cockpit there. Um, and you can see it was definitely um, Cochrane's uh, Phoenix. Which is no bad thing because um, obviously they use the same sets because they'd already been built, you know. So um, so yeah, it was, it was it was an easy cheat, so to speak. And you can see it there in the hangar; all the wings are folded up. It was pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, they don't do that in the model, which is a shame. But you know, there you go. Then we get the topographical view, which is really cool. I was at these sections. Um, Uh, Jonathan Archer and Trip Tucker met f fair, uh, first met while they were uh, working on the NX project. Uh, it was Trip who convinced that they were um, nothing wrong with the design of the NX Alpha's engines. He correctly believed that the problem lay in the ratio in which the matter and antimatter were combined. And of course, everybody knows it's one part at matter, one part antimatter. Um, Duval was made captain of the Shenandoah um, seven years after he broke the Warp 3 barrier in the NX Delta. Upon hearing the news, Jonathan Archer remarked, Thank God they were uh, they were over 100 light years away. Um, Commander Gardner, who was another test pilot in the NX project, as Vulcan Ambassador Soval's first choice to become captain of NX-01 Enterprise. Soval left Captain Archer, was too impulsive and had... Um, such an important to be too impulsive to be uh, to hold such an impulsive. Sorry, I'll say that again. Too impulsive to hold such an important position. I've forgotten how to talk. It's every time I try and do these videos, my brain just goes. Um, NX engines, other part of the uh, NX progen, uh, progen, NX project included Captain N. W. Jeffries and Charles Chucker the Third. Uh, Jeffries. Wanted to fit powerful weapons to the NX class ships, something that had, something that Archer was initially against, but later agreed probably a good idea. And then we've got some um, draw, uh, design in the NX Alpha. We've got some really cool drawings. I like this. This could be if you rework the nacelles a bit. This could be an alien uh, attack ship or something. That's pretty nasty looking. That one. I can see why they didn't go for it. And then you've got more looking like a, an aircraft than anything else on this one. Um, Again, it's a cool design. Um, oh, excuse me. Oh, oh. There we go. It's been lazy mid afternoon. And then we've got the um, image of the NX project there, which is really cool, like a phoenix in flight. That was designed by Michael Kuda. Um, got some really nice pencil drawings of it there. Uh, one in and on on the um, in the hangar bay there with some uh, repair vehicles and refueling vehicles and stuff, just to sort of give it a, a sense of scale. And there's a, there's a bloke stood there as well. Really cool idea. Really, I really like that. And then you see it sort of either coming into land or taking off. It's a really nice pencil drawing. I wish I could draw like that. 
Uh, and then you've got the uh, reuse of the cockpit there on the set. Uh, and then the Road to Warp 5, which goes into the uh, um, the NX-01's warp core there, which you can see trips through for a bit there. Um, and then you've got um, Cochrane, LaForge and Riker. Now this is an interesting little um, throwback. In the episode The New Ground, uh, New Ground rather, um, there's a doctor, a professor, who creates um, a soliton wave that basically... Um, flies towards the ship, catches the ship, and then sends it to warp. And then, at the destination, the planet, or the starbase, or wherever, fires a um, resonance pulse, which counteracts the wave, bringing the ship to, to normal space. And LaForge got real excited in the episode, and he said, like, warp speed without warp drive. And he said, imagine it, imagine being in, um, you know, the Wright Brothers' first flight, or being Dr. Cochrane's first flight, of, you know, at warp, warp speed. And in first contact, there he is, doing the doing that exact same thing, which is really cool. You know, it's, it's the kind of thing of like, this is where time travel gets real weird. He hasn't done it yet, but he's already done it. You know, and then we've got um, a really nice cool picture of the warp car there. Very unusual um, warp car. Um, it's been on its, on its side. Every other warp car in Federation um, has been vertical. Uh, apart from this one, oh, and the one on the NX, uh, NX one, the one seven hundred one as well. That's, that's a bit weird, that one. It's never really shown. You can see the dilithium matrix chamber, but the core itself is never, you know. But then again, it's never mentioned that as a warp core until I think next gen. I think they call it that. Um, and then we've got a uh, power usage of Miller, Miller Juice Cochrans, um, which is really cool there, like a little graph showing the acceleration rate. Um, which is really cool and on screen first appearance was Test Flight uh, First Flight, sorry, in Enterprise and designed by John Eves, should have known better of course it was Trivia <clears throat> in Star Trek Enterprise episode uh, First Flight we introduced to Ruby a waitress who works at the 602 Club which is in Star Trek Online if you go to Star Trek um, Starfleet Academy you can go to the 602 Club um, I think there is a drink you can get called the Ruby, I think. Um, she had previously mentioned in... She was previously mentioned Season 1 episode, Shuttlepod 1, which is a really good episode, actually. Uh, when Trip took a Malcolm Reed, fearing that they were about to die, uh, confessed that they both had a relationship with Ruby, including, according to Trip, Ruby had already picked out the names of her children and said... To marry the first man to guess them correctly. Trip guessed Cyrus and Chester and uh, Rosalie, which turned out not to be right. 602 Club, I mentioned, uh, where men members of the NX program socialised. The, the name of the bar that was in operation between 1951 and 1991 and was a popular hangout for students from uh, University of Wisconsin Madison. Um, including the former student named Rick Behrman. He, of course, went on to be executive producer and co-creator of several Star Trek series, including Enterprise. First Flight revealed the reason behind Charles Trip Tucker's nickname. It was father and grandfather were both named Charles, so he was Charles Tucker the third, the third, triple, shot him to Trip. And there we go. And then we've got a nice uh, top view of it there, which is really cool. So, onto the ship itself. And if we can get it off the stand, there we are. It's a really nice one. It's a really good one. I really like it. Um, you can see it's obviously um, influenced on the Phoenix. Um, but, you know, this is just a test ship. It's just to test the the, the warp core um, to see if it can travel to warp 2.2. I think they got it to 2.5 in the episode. Um, but it's, it's, it's a really nice. It's all metal. Apart from the nacelles and a few add-on bits, but it's all metal, which is really cool. Um, yeah, it's a really nice design. It's quite a simplistic design, but then again, the design of it itself is quite simplistic. Um, I like the impulse, uh, the, the well, the solid fuel rocket there. I do like. Um, I'm not, I think these are sort of air stabilizers because what it does is, when it gets loaded out onto the runway, the wings are in a folded position. Then it folds out and then it engages the. A solid fuel propellant on a like a, on a ramp, and then it 
you know, goes up like that on a ramp, straight into orbit. And then once it's in orbit, it goes to warp. Um, but yeah, um, you've got some really nice sticker work, some decals on there as well. You've got some the Starfleet logo, Imper the Starfleet logo there. You've got one on the wing. But I put the small ones on there, and I put the big ones on both sides of the wing because just, the small ones are on there, and the big ones are on there. It's, it's a bit strange, but it's kind of cool at the same time. Um, some really nice clear plastic for the uh, nacelles there, and you can see things w which would then be incorporated under the ships as well. You see, you've got this section, oh, there we are. Got this section at the top here, this bit, which is the intercooler on Constitution class ships. Um, I'll just have to get the bigger out again. See, which which are um, these sections. Along along the along the nacelle there, which is really cool, um, and then you've got the, the standard nacelle configuration. But I also like the fact that this is a kind of bridge. Get on there, there we are, between um, the the warp delta, which we got a couple of issues ago, and you know, so it's sort of like there's this the warp delta. But I think warp delta was already in use then, but it's a nice progression, I think, to put it in there next to the phoenix. It would sit really nicely. Um, but I do these buzzard collectors collect the light. No pun intended. No pun intended. From every angle you, you position it, they they reflect the light really nice. They look like they're actually glowing. Um, but it's really cool. Um, there's not a lot to be said about it really. The colour's nice. The uh, detail is nice, and I do like this sort of copper. Um, it looks more copper in, in real light than it is sort of yellow there. If it's a real copper stripper on there. Uh, you've just got all these wonderful panel lines in there. Uh, you can see the hinges on the uh, wing tips, on the wings there. Um, but lovely, lovely detail. Um, the Aztec is nice on it as well. It's got a real light metallic sheen to it as well. Uh, I keep saying as well. Um, it's just a well-designed ship, and it's well-produced. Now, if you can, why can't things like the Enterprise C be produced to this standard? Um, it's, 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 it boggles my mind, really, why they can do ships like this brilliantly, and then it comes to you know the hero ships, and they're very lacklustre, I think. But anyway, that's just that's just my personal opinion. There's people out there that love them. Um, oh, there's a red strip there. I never even noticed that before. Oh, yeah. Red, red pinstriping on it. On both top and bottom of the nacelles. Never noticed that before. That's new. Um, yeah, really nice. Um, I can't even see the join line at all. Um, it looks well. There's a join line at the back there, but it looks like panel lines. It looks like it's been put together, so it kind of camouflages it a bit. And then we get the stand, which just says uh, NX Alpha, and then we have got the the plastic connector, and it connects thus. It and it's really cool. I really do like it. I think it's a fantastic little ship. Get it if you like Enterprise. Get it if you like um, pre-Starfleet vessels, uh, pre-Federation vessels. Rather, should I should have said this is a Starfleet vessel. Um, get it if you like Starfleet ships. It's a nice sort of um, throwback to earlier days, you know. Um, but it's cool. It's going to look really cool next to the Phoenix, I think, when I've got when I've got all this lot sorted out all along here. Um, so yeah, so that's me, that's the NX Alpha, and I'll catch you all later. Bye for now.